guys, welcome to the 30 paintings in 30 days project. So every day of this month, at least 30 days of this month, we are gonna create a little painting a day and we're gonna see what happens. I'm gonna experiment mostly with watercolor and gouache and um, let's get to painting and I will see you at the end. Hey guys, we are here for painting number 12 of our 30 paintings in 30 days series. So let's get started. Okay, I've got the usual suspects at this point. If you've been watching the videos from episode one, um, then you would know I've got a inspiration picture book over that way. I take photos and clip photos of things. These are mostly photo, I think these are all photos I took. And then I match them up onto a page into this journal with some paint swatches I think are inspired by the photos. Um, and then I've kind of made my own like palette inspiration. So I've been using my books to create these little painting studies that we're doing um, for the 30 paintings in 30 days series. Let's see if I can get that to stand up. It doesn't want to stand up. Let's see. There we go. Um, I also have a lot of watercolor palettes and I've pulled out one. This is my floral and cobalt palette um, with uh, a lot of blues, as you can see. This is um, a variety of paint brands, including Jane Davenport, PBO, Holbein, Quar, Van Gogh, Daniel Smith. Yeah, um, a very bright um, palette with some nice earthy grounded colors in, the, in it. Um, so we're gonna use that. I've got a little paint palette here. I've got some brushes. My um, whiteout pen, my white gel pen, a big crystal black pen, and some water, a sea sponge, and a couple of rags. So let's get started. Um, so using the current page I just showed you as inspiration, we're going to put all of our brushes in the water that we're going to use. Um, I'm going to start out, as usual, with my half inch flat. And... I think, where do I want to get started? Holy cow. I think I'm going to get started with grabbing some yellow ochre. I should spray these and get them wet, which I didn't do. Let's do this. I'm gonna put some of yellow ochre on here and then I'm gonna add some water. Again, as always, you should know by now, I prefer to do something with the background first to eliminate having to do too much with it later and work around whatever I have um, created as my focal point. And these are just little painting studies. They're not supposed to be masterpiece works of art or anything. They're a great way to get used to a new medium, um, reacquaint yourself with a medium that you haven't worked with for a while, uh, work out new combinations of colors and compositions. And if you're doing client work, it's a great way to um, work out what the client may or may not want. And I've been known to fill up entire sketchbooks with things like this. So we're gonna give this a dry. Okay. I am going to take my round brush. This is a round number four. This is an Escoda brush. I do like the Princeton Neptune brushes. They are my favorite. I'm going to take the Jane Davenport um, paint. It's called 70s Eyeshadow. It's a very tealy blue color. One of the pictures that I have here for my inspiration book is a picture of the inside of a, an aquarium. Um, but I think I took after we moved to Oregon, so I think it's the local Oregon Aquarium. It's not Monterey Bay Aquarium in California, but I could be wrong about that. It just has these sort of bursted firework type shapes in the photo that I think I want to play with abstracting on this little study. So I'm just dipping straight into the paint without diluting it with too much water. 
using the tip of my brush to just create some streaky paint lines. And I'm gonna go in uh, with a little bit of water. If you let the paint sit a little bit, then it's not gonna move too much. It'll move just a little bit and that might be what you want. Okay. And then I'm gonna go in with a pink color because there's also some bright pink. I think these are anemone in the photo. And I think I'm gonna go into uh, the Jane Davenport color. It's a very bright pink called Best Friend. And I'm just touching my brush to this where I want the center to be and then pulling it up and lifting as I do. You don't, again, don't need to dig any holes to China. I know I keep saying that. You can, of course, push the brush down hard. You're gonna get a different mark, but I want you to play with how you're using the brush. How hard you're touching it to the paper and all of that. Okay. So if your color dries too much before you get over there with the water, you can always, of course, add more, which I'm doing now. Okay, let's give that a little dry and I'll okay. be right back. I'm gonna take our smaller round brush. This is a Princeton Aqua Elite round number one. And I'm gonna go into Jane Davenport Mystic, which is a purple, pretty purple color. And I'm just gonna do some dots. Your pictures don't have to look like anything in particular. They can be very abstracted. Remember, these are little studies. We're playing with color, composition. I'm gonna, of course, go touch some of the dots with some water. If, again, if they don't bleed because you've done too many dots and it's dried too fast, then you can always go in with a little more paint. I do think um, every time I work with the Jane Davenport paints, they dry very quickly. And that's another reason to do these studies is to familiarize yourself with the medium. And if you have different kinds of watercolor paint, like I do, um, which ones stay wet longer, uh, which ones bleed better, which ones have the color payoff that you want. Um, this is just, this is a good exercise for that. could of course be way more random about my dots than I am but you know I'm having one of those kind of days where I just feel like I need to be in control that's kind of nice I like that okay so let's go in I'm not gonna dry that I'm gonna just go in with there are some very dark brown and gray tones in this painting and so I'm gonna go in I think I'm gonna stick with this little brush and I'm gonna go in with um, Holbein's Van Dyke Brown which is a very dark brown I think I'm gonna do something like that. I think I need a bigger brush. So I think I'm gonna switch to the round number four. Oops. 
Yep, that's better. Sometimes you like the very bright colors in a painting and you like where it's going as I do this one but you feel like it needs that really dark tone to ground it or it's a very dark painting and it needs a bright color um, to lighten it just a little bit and it really just makes the whole thing pop. And I'm going to take the Jane Davenport ink, which is a dark blue-gray. And you notice that um, I only touched the brush into that paint pot once, and look at how much um, color I've gotten out of it. The Jane Davenport paints are very pigmented, generally speaking. I don't know how light fast they are, um, and I don't know if you can buy just the individual colors if you run out of a color. I do think you can now. When I got mine, you couldn't. Okay, I'm going to stop there because I really like that. I'm, we're going to give it a dry. And I'll okay, dry. let's take the tape off. There we go. Painting number 12. I really like it. All right, what do you think? Version, sorry. Um, if you'd like to support the free content here on Facebook or in the, fa uh, here on Facebook, holy cow. If you'd like to support the free content here on YouTube or over in the Facebook art groups, I certainly would appreciate that. You can of course join Patreon. We do have YouTube membership here for a, a small fee. And um, also I have an Etsy shop and I have um, PayPal tip jar and all that stuff. So check out the video description. Relevant links will also be down there. And uh, yeah, don't forget the most important things. Stay healthy, stay safe, stay creative, and go out and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. Do share your work with me. I would love to see what you're doing. That's it for now. See you later. Bye guys.